Boeing has just launched one of the most high-pressure flight tests in modern military aviation, and the result of this test could rewrite global air power. For years, KC-46 Pegasus tanker project has been called Boeing's biggest embarrassment, plagued by delays, defects, and warnings from the US Air Force. But now, everything depends on a single upgrade, RVS 2.0, an advanced AI-powered vision system that's supposed to fix the tanker's biggest flaw. And if it fails, the consequences won't just hit Boeing. NATO strategy, US air dominance, and billions in defense contracts could flip overnight. The KC-46A Pegasus tanker from Boeing was designed to replace the aging fleet of KC-135 tankers for the United States Air Force and provide the capability to refuel fighters such as the F-35 Lightning II and F-22 Raptor while they operated at high altitude and long range. The aircraft is derived from the Boeing 767 airliner variant and entered service in 2019. Instead of achieving smooth entry into service, the KC-46 program encountered a major problem. The original remote vision system that guides the refueling boom via camera feeds rather than a direct visual window. The system was built to allow boom operators to view the receiver aircraft through multi-spectral cameras and displays rather than looking out through a traditional window. During testing and early operations, pilots and boom operators reported issues with the RVS. Distorted images, poor depth perception, blind spots during aerial refueling operations. These faults raise concerns because a mid-air refueling boom mishap can cause structural damage or worse to both tanker and receiver. For example, the USAF classified some of the RVS issues as Category 1 deficiencies. Because of these shortcomings, the USAF limited the operational envelope of the KC-46. The tanker was cleared for worldwide deployment in September 2022 under restricted conditions following a deliberate, data-driven process, but the optical refueling system remained a key weakness. Thus, the KC-46 became a major liability for Boeing rather than the breakthrough asset originally envisioned. In response to the RVS problems, Boeing and the USAF agreed in April 2020 to redesign the entire system at Boeing's cost, creating what is now called RVS 2.0. The RVS 2.0 upgrade introduces full-color 4K resolution cameras, panoramic lenses, 3D stereoscopic imaging, long-wave infrared sensors, and a laser ranging capability for better depth and alignment monitoring during the refueling process. On 15 November 2025, Boeing flew the first KC-46 equipped with RVS 2.0 in the Seattle area marking a key milestone in the months-long flight test campaign required before USAF certification. Nevertheless, schedule delays remain significant. RVS 2.0 was initially expected to be fielded as early as late 2023, but has slipped into the 2026-2027 timeframe for full fleet retrofit. While the upgrade appears promising and represents a major technical leap, the US, AF and Boeing must still prove the system's reliability in all lighting and mission conditions. The upgrade to RVS 2.0 carries major consequences for Boeing and US air power. If the KC-46 is certified for full operational deployment, Boeing strengthens its position in the aerial refueling market and the US Air Force gains long-range logistical capability. Allies including Japan, Israel, Poland and Italy already have KC-46 orders and their procurement confidence depends on the new system performing as expected. If RVS 2.0 fails or suffers further delays, Boeing risks losing more than $10 billion in future contracts and could forfeit export opportunities to competitors such as the Airbus 330 MRTT. The tanker's success also directly affects the USAF's ability to project power worldwide Aerial refueling enables fighters and support aircraft to strike from extended distances, remain in contested regions longer, and operate without returning to home bases. Any limitation caused by tanker shortages or reliability concerns could raise questions about US readiness. 
The USAF has noted that the KC-46 still cannot refuel aircraft such as the A-10 on a routine basis due to boom and vision system issues, though legacy tankers remain available for now. Operational delays have strategic implications, particularly for NATO and the Indo-Pacific, where long-range refueling represents endurance and deterrence. If the KC-46 becomes fully operational with RVS 2.0, the United States and partner nations gain a measurable advantage. If not, rival forces including China could gain leverage in long-range aerial logistics. Engineers are collecting performance data from the first RVS 2.0 flight, with full contact testing next. Certification is still pending, leaving the program's future uncertain. Boeing just stunned the entire aviation world with a move nobody expected, a project everyone thought was dead, but now, thanks to Emirates, it's suddenly back in play and closer to reality than ever before. Because behind closed doors, Boeing is secretly studying a brand new giant, the Boeing 777. A stretched, ultra-long twin-engine monster that would become the largest twin-engine passenger jet ever built. And the moment Emirates revealed their latest 777X mega order at the Dubai Air Show, the real shock dropped. Boeing finally has the backing to push this aircraft toward a full launch. But what exactly is this 777 and why does it matter? Take the already massive 779, the largest member of Boeing's next-generation 777X family, and stretch it by roughly 16 feet. That extension would push the overall length to an incredible 268 feet, making it longer than a football field. We're talking about a twin-engine beast capable of carrying around 470 passengers or potentially even more depending on how airlines configure the cabin. This would essentially make it the closest thing to a modern super jumbo, rivaling the capacity of aircraft like the Airbus A380, but with just two engines instead of four. But the most interesting part is that the 777 isn't some brand new concept Boeing dreamed up last week. This idea has been floating around since the 2010s, when Boeing first considered stretching the 777X family. Back then, they established technical feasibility, meaning they knew it could be done from an engineering standpoint. But then, nothing happened. The project went dormant. Boeing focused on certifying the existing 779, 778 and the freighter variant, all of which have faced significant delays and remain uncertified nearly six years behind schedule. So why bring it back now? One word, Emirates. The Dubai-based airline just placed a massive order for 65 additional 779s at the Dubai Air Show, a deal worth a staggering $38 billion. But buried in that announcement was the real bombshell. Emirates has formally agreed to back Boeing's feasibility study for the 777. They've even secured options in the program that could be converted to this stretched variant. Emirates chairman Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum made their intentions crystal clear, stating they fully support the study and are very keen to purchase the aircraft if it's developed. This isn't just casual interest, this is Emirates putting serious weight behind the project. But here's the challenge Boeing faces making this aircraft actually work. According to Justin Hale, Boeing's customer leader for the 777X, the biggest technical hurdle isn't about fitting the stretch or protecting the tail from over-rotation. Boeing's electronic tail skid protection system can handle that. The real concern is takeoff performance. For a twin-engine aircraft this massive, certification rules demand rigorous testing around critical engine failure scenarios. What happens if one engine fails during takeoff? Can the aircraft still maintain directional control? Can it achieve the required climb rate and takeoff distance on just one engine? These are life or death questions that must be answered before any regulatory authority would certify such a beast. Beyond engine out performance, Boeing's study will also examine structural weight penalties from the stretch, payload range trade-offs, and overall market viability. Darren Hulst, Boeing's VP of Commercial Marketing, framed it as a careful balance between risk and versatility. 
The replacement market for aircraft seating over 350 passengers, including aging Airbus, a 380s and 777-300ERS, totals just over 1,000 aircraft. That's not a huge market, which explains Boeing's caution. For Emirates, though, this aircraft could be a lifeline. As the world's largest Airbus A380 operator, they're staring down a massive problem. Their super jumbo fleet won't last past 2041, and there's no dedicated replacement. The Airbus A380 has allowed Emirates to pump enormous capacity into slot-constrained airports, leveraging Dubai as a global hub. Without something comparable, their entire network strategy faces disruption. They've begged Airbus for an Airbus A380neo. That's not happening. They've pushed for an Airbus 350 stretch, and now, finally, the 77710 study has real momentum. The question now isn't whether Boeing can build it, it's whether they will. 